Hi everyone, Jason here from the Hit List Podcast. I'm going to be doing something different with the podcast today. I have some errands to run real quick and I'm going to take you along with me. And let me just put on my coat real quick. I watched many films this year and there we go. Many of them for the first time. And since it's the end of the year, I want to discuss my favorite first watched films from this year. The first on my list is Unforgiven with Clint Eastwood. I regret not watching it sooner because it has such amazing cinematography, a wonderful cast, and it plays as an anti-western. All these tropes that we're familiar with in the western genre are subverted. The hero, and I say this in quotes, he isn't a badass. He's old, and he's not exactly a hero either. Many of the men in the film are concerned with leaving a mark in history, leaving behind a legacy. Like, for example, there's the sheriff who wants to be known for being tough on crime. And there's also the young man who wants to be known as a tough outlaw. But their actions to get what they want shows them that they may be wrong about what they want. Hello? Hey, Jason. How's it going? Zach, yo, hey! Uh, I'm recording something for, for my podcast right now, so perfect timing. Do you mind telling me what were your favorite first watch films from this year? Of course, yeah. A movie I watched for the first time this year would be Before Sunset. It's the middle film in the Before trilogy, and it's about mm-hmm. these two people. They had a great night uh, nine years ago, and they reunite for the first time. I really love it. Uh, the character work is so good, and it's really just like this long, like 90-minute conversation between these two people and like... The love is there, but they've all they've been hurt in the past. Really great stuff. Really great stuff. Another one I really loved this year was um, one I actually hadn't heard of. It's called The Red Shoes. Film from the 40s. It's British. It's about this ballerina who is trying to become like the best ballerina in this company. That's the type of movie that you watch and you see everything it inspired. Uh, Black Swan takes from it. La La Land. Uh, Whiplash takes from it, and my favorite part is this is like 20 minute ballet sequence in the middle of the movie, blew me away. Probably one of the best things I've ever seen in a movie ever. So that's really top notch. And uh, last one I want to talk about. Have you ever heard of Being John Malkovich? <laughs> I've heard about it. I've never seen it though. That movie is bizarre in the best way it's about a puppeteer who finds a door and if you go through the door you end up in the mind of famous actor john malkovich (laughs) and you can control him so really funny but really existentialist like how do we control ourselves that sort of thing um great performances from everyone specifically malkovich and cameron diaz who I've never thought of as a great actress, but who is 10 out of 10 in that movie. And yeah, those are, I'd say those three are my favorites for the year. That, that's a really good list, a very diverse list. But uh, I, I have to ask, what were you calling me about? Huh. You know, I totally forgot. <laughs> that's too bad. It happens to the best of us, though. I'll talk to you later, though. See ya. The second film on my list takes place in Los Angeles and stars Robert Downey Jr. and Val Kilmer. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. It's a buddy cop neo-noir directed by Shane Black. It's everything I could ever want in a film. It's funny. It's shot on location. There's great narration by Robert Downey Jr. And there's even an appearance by an actor from the hit TV show Psych. Do yourself a favor and go watch it. Calm down, Bolita. Daniela? Hey, how are you? Oh, hey, Jason. Hey, I'm recording something for my podcast. You want to be on it? Sure, why not? All right, listen, everyone. We have Daniela here. She was a guest during Season 2 of the Hit List Podcast. Go listen to it wherever podcasts are listened to. Daniela, what were your favorite films this year that you watched for the first time? So, I just watched What's Eating Gilbert Grape. And it's been on my movie list for the longest because, you know, Johnny Depp is in it. Um, Another one that I watched was White Tiger. I watched it last week with my dad, so we had a nice bonding moment through that movie. And last but not least, The the Devil All the Time, a great movie with uh, Robert Pattinson. I'm a huge fan, so I had to watch it. 
Yeah, I recently became a fan of Robert Pattinson because of because he's awesome. He's Batman. He's Bruce Wayne now, and he looks like Kurt Cobain in the in the trailers. Movie hasn't come out yet, but I'm excited to see him in it. All right. Well, it was nice catching up with you. I have to go pick up some boba right now. Um, but thanks for saying hi. All right. Bye. Bye. And now a word from our sponsors. Now back to the show. Okay, I just have to get a few things from my list here. Let's see. Ice, cups, pineapple. Let's get the pineapple first. Man, the fruits here look very colorful. You know what else is full of color? The 36th Chamber of Shaolin. Uh, well, probably not as colorful as its sequel, The Disciples of the 36th Chamber, but certainly much more enjoyable. 36th Chamber of Shaolin is a Hong Kong Kung Fu film and widely considered to be one of the greatest Kung Fu films of all time. It's certainly worth the hype if I do say so myself. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's a fine. Wait, Sophia? Jason? Yeah, yeah, from the Hitless Podcast. Nice to see you. Hey, uh, oh, let me guess. You're recording something for your podcast. I am. How'd you know? You're holding a, an audio recorder in your hand. You know what? I can't get anything past you. I know. I just have that instinct or whatever. Well, since you're here, I want to ask you. Can you tell me your favorite films that you watched for the first time this year? It's for the end of the year special. Wow. I've seen a lot of movies this year, but I guess I will condense it down to my top five. First off, I'm just saying this because I am writing off the high of watching it for the first time yesterday, and it is the newest Spider-Man movie, No Way Home. Without saying any spoilers, I'll just say it exceeded my expectations, so go watch it for yourself. And then my second movie, I would say, would be the 1948 The Red Shoes. This was a really great movie with really stunning choreography. I really enjoy ballet, so if you like ballet, you'll like it too. And I think the story was really compelling as well. My third one would be the 2016 The Handmaiden. I had been wanting to watch this movie for so long, and I finally did. And all I can say is that some of their explicit scenes were really explicit. I was very surprised. (laughs) But I really loved the ending. My fourth movie would be the 2000s movie In the Mood for Love. I had heard so many great things about this movie, especially with the cinematography, the use of color, and it was also my very first exposure to the actor Tony Leung, so I will definitely check out more of his movies from now on. And then the fifth movie, last but not least, is the 1998 movie The Prince of Egypt. Yes, yes. Everyone, everyone from my friends, Everyone on the internet had said that this movie was so amazing and I was hoping it wouldn't disappoint, and it didn't. I was so impressed and amazed on how well this movie was made with the animation, soundtrack, story. It holds up very well, and I'm really glad I watched it. It's a really great list. Uh, A friend of mine just called me earlier today saying he loved the Red Shoes as well. And I think I was going to talk to you about The Prince of Egypt for our episode together, you know, season three, episode one, go, mm-hmm. go listen to it, where I told you how I used The Prince of Egypt to conceive time. So yeah, really great list right there. Thank you. Thank you. Well, anyways, I have to go. I think I see someone from high school and I'd rather not run into them. So I will see you later. <laughs> it was nice seeing you. Thank you. Hey, can someone give me a hand real quick with these groceries? The pineapple is about to fall on the floor! I, I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you. Uh, uh, thank you, Albert, thank you. No problem, Jason, but how have you been? Wait, is that a, is that a Zoom H1N? Hey, you know your stuff. I'm actually recording some of my favorite first-watched films from this year. I was just about to say that another film I liked this year was Point Break. It's so fun. I mean, Keanu Reeves and Patrick Swayze in one movie? Amazing! Who thought? Who could have thought of such a great duo? Plus, there's this skydiving scene that's just exhilarating. Hey, by the way, do you have any favorite first watch films from this year? Oh yeah, I'm glad you asked. Okay, so Shang-Chi for starters because amazing action sequences, 
obviously great amount of representation for all my Asian friends that are actors and otherwise, so I think Shang-Chi was one of my favorites. And also Mortal Kombat, because Mortal Kombat, huge fan of the video games. So anytime I see a video game adaptation that's actually really good, it's always amazing to be able to enjoy that. And seeing the characters from the video game come on screen, and seeing the actors, and especially legendary ones at that, portray some of my favorites like Scorpion and Sub-Zero, were just like, you can't get any better than that. And then lastly, this was a tough one, but lastly I have to go with Demon Slayer. I mean, amazing, top-notch animation. The best animated film to come out here in the West, I think, the whole year. I don't think it's even close. Also, amazing characters, development is amazing, and it's probably one of the only films this year that made me feel all the emotions from start to finish. So that's a huge plus. But Jason, Jason, listen, it's a party we got Mingo, right? You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, you go on. I gotta get some water real quick. I'll be right here. Why, why are you scared? Why are you scared of the party, man? Don't run from the grind. Don't run from the grind. Hey, man, I'm all about the grind. I'm all about the grind. He's scared to talk to Jessica. Get out of here. Jason? And me? Hey, how is the smartest woman in the world? Stop. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm actually recording my date today on my audio recorder. I'm asking people what their favorite first watches were this year. What were yours? Oh, wow. What a good question. My favorite first watches this year were probably... I'm just going to start with the kicker, Dune. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I really thought about it. I was like, it has to be on it. So I'm just going to go through my list. So it's Dune, Corpse Bride... Sweetest Thing, mm. Nodding Hill, and Kill Your Darlings. Ooh. And I like I made sure I had a variety of kind of like, so Kill Your Darlings, very like dark. It's like dark academia. I really got into a TikTok hole of dark academia. And I don't even have a TikTok, which is the interesting part about it. I just found the dark academia thing. And of course, big Harry Potter fan. So, you know, I had to support Daniel Radcliffe. And this is the only movie of his I could watch that i would like like he has like all these other movies that are just so indie and so weird i remember one of the movies you spoke about and he's just just strange and Notting hill i wanted to like go back to like days of like rom-coms and romance movies that i feel like we don't get now right and julia roberts is fantastic i was just really like i was just like okay mm. i need to watch all her other movies julia roberts was fantastic in Notting hill and i think Notting hill is like the groundwork and the basis for a lot of um, like fan fiction that people have now of like a very like a famous celebrity just kind of going into like your favorite coffee shop or in his case, your actual bookstore. So it's like the bookish guy with the celebrity girl that like meet and fall in love and like fish out of water situation. And I feel like all the fan fictions are about that. And then Sweetest Thing is like the rom-com. It definitely has a comedy aspect of it. Cameron Diaz is hilarious and it's so raunchy it's like definitely not something you would see with your parents like it just broke down a musical about dicks it was very strange but <laughs> so fun like i was like it's so funny and then corpse ride i'm always trying to get in the mood of the holidays so halloween i was trying to like force myself to watch like, a scary movie or something corpse ride was so random it was so awkward but it was such a fun time and I think um, during the pandemic, I'm having a hard time of kind of watching a show and just staying and just watching the movie or whatever without paying attention to my phone. And like I'm trying to act like I'm in actual I'm in movie theater, even though I'm at home. And Corpse Ride allowed me to do that because it was like it was so odd. Obviously, it's Tim Burton, so he can't make anything normal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. So it was really fun. I like that. And then Dune, obviously, I'm obsessed You've heard me talk about it on Twitter. I'm obsessed. I'm going to read the book. Uh, it was just well done. I love a nice sci-fi. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty good list you got there. So, are you going to come and mingle? Or were you just there to just hear my list? I'll be right there. I just got to wrap this up real quick. All right. Well, don't take too long. One final film I enjoyed this year that has forever changed how I view animation is Paprika. I had heard about this film over the years, but never made the effort to watch it until this year. And I'm sure if I saw it instead of Inception when I was 14, I would have become an animator instead of a filmmaker. It's such a great film. 
filled with surrealism, mesmerizing music, and they play with all the tricks in the book to make it one of the most creative animated films out there. It's amazing. I wish I could see it for the first time again. Hey, Jason, get over here. Come on, man. What are you doing? Well, that's it for me. I have to go mingle now. <laughs> You have been listening to the Hit List Podcast. My name is Jason Ramirez, and until next time, cross off a new film from your list, and Happy New Year. Thank you for listening to the Hit List Podcast. If you liked this episode, please consider giving us five stars and leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. It really helps. Follow the Hitlist Podcast on social media. We're on Facebook at the Hitlist Podcast, on Instagram at the underscore Hitlist underscore Podcast, and on Twitter at the underscore Hitlist underscore Pod. Have you recently crossed the film off your list? I want to hear from you. Call 301-778-8235 and leave a voice message naming the film, your thoughts, and whether you found it a hit or a miss. Your voice message could be featured on the next episode of the Hitlist Podcast. The Hitlist Podcast is produced and edited by me, Jason Ramirez.